The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. It's time to get back to the super glue gun. That's correct. Now in previous episodes, we worked on all the individual parts and mechanisms within the super glue gun, the trigger, the circuitry, the hot end, the auto stand, the extruder motor. But now it's time to bring all those things together and make a cool, cohesive prototype. Yeah. It actually looks like something. Work on the case design today, maybe? Yeah, as well as like how the case works with the auto stand. Yeah. I think that's a big thing we need to figure out. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we got a lot of designing and testing to do. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Reprinted this with a flat bottom there so it can sit when it's, uh, you know, when you had the stand out. So let's just make sure it's gonna work. Slap in the circuit board here. Bingo, dino DNA. Look at that. Yeah. So I've been drawing sketches, try to figure out the best way to enclose all of this. Um, I think I'll print the other half of this though, because I think this part's pretty good. So we'll have the bottom half with the handle and the electronics. And then the top half will bolt onto that, which will contain the motor, the hot end, and the auto retracting servo. So I need to kind of build an enclosure here, maybe almost in two halves. I started it here, basically making a new uh, loader for the hot glue, just making sure it's, you know, really nice and neat. So what I should probably do is actually extend upon this and make two halves. So there'd be like this, and it would have you know everything on the side, and then I made up make a mirror of it that bolts into it. So basically, it sandwiches together, and completes the look. I uh, used up the last of our high quality clay to sculpt. Kind of representation of how the front of the glue gun could be. I based it off of the, you know, shape of everything. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking there could be like an indentation here and the stand can sit in that and that way it can basically fold up fairly tightly to the barrel. I'm still kind of inspired by this glue gun. I pulled it out of the storage bin. I like how it has just one, you know, pretty simple glue module. I wonder if this is something that we could buy, like off Alibaba or something. And also it's got pretty simple. It's got some uh, insulating rings here. And I like how it's also got the temperature control built into it. I wonder if this is something we could get. I guess what I could do is grab some uh, brass rod and uh, work up a test of that. Yeah, that. I mean this, well, I mean, it's just kind of hanging free, but it, I like the, I like the idea of it. But one thing to think about is, if we're doing that much motion, if we're coming back this far, that's uh, quite a few degrees of rotation. It's probably at least, at least 120. And I'm not sure if we can actually achieve that much rotation using the same method as we did over here. I mean, it would be cool like if this can come up really nice and tight like that. And then also be a little bit more forward so you don't hit it with your finger. Because if you take your finger off the trigger and then the stand kicks back out, you don't want to hit your finger with the stand, you know, obviously that would, that would be lame. I mean, it's not, again, it's not going to hurt, it would just be dumb. Okay, Ben, I think it is definitely time to really look in depth in this stand idea. After a previous episode aired where we talked about the stand, there were some comments from people about how they thought it would get in the way or that, you know, it would be false triggered uh, or yeah. You know, other problems. Um, so one thing that I'm worried about this design is because 
you don't have it resting on solid points, like it's still not super stable. Right. So I feel like if you're gonna make a stand, it needs to be pretty rock solid. Well, what about the, uh, the, the front protrusion method we were discussing? Yeah, so instead of having a loop that flips up or down, it would extend out. Well, there'd still be a loop, but it would, yeah, it would shoot out instead of flip, mm. flip back. Yeah, we, we've got some brass rods left, we can mock it up. Okay. So like that. So as is, it would need to be longer or the gun's angle would need to be lower. Well, let's, let's think about this. So um, we said like the minimum distance would be like an inch and uh, Inch a and a quarter. quarter, maybe. So yeah, what if we work our way backwards from that? This is a 30 degree uh, rotation on the gun handle. Yeah, I mean, we could probably just add about, oh well, God, like not even five degrees, a couple degrees. So we, yeah, we, I would say 32 would probably get us there. Uh, okay, so I guess what that what that tells us is that a 1.25 inch extension retraction is workable. It also goes past the end of the gun barrel, which means it could also double as a strand catcher, which would be amazing. Would uh, you worry about that getting gummed up and like build, getting too much buildup to the point where it would well maybe restrict you, it from maybe retracting we, properly? You know, we have maybe maybe it doesn't retract all the way, so we figure out that there's like one finger length or one finger width of space. So there's room for that and also, you know, if you stick your finger in there, it wouldn't be a big deal. All right, so we know that we can make 1.25 inches of retraction work along with the geometry of the rest of the gun. So I guess the question is, how do we do it? Yeah, so if we had a, if we had a gear at this angle under the barrel like that, and then we could actuate notches in the uh, stand, possibly. So, like, if the stand would be like here, I mean, we'd have to have kind of like a bulbous thing in front of the gun. It would look like some sort of weird gun from like 1890, but that could oh. work. Mm, what? I'm just now realizing where you were placing that. Yeah, I was thinking we'd put it like. Uh, it just seems to add a lot of bulk. Well, yeah. I feel like that adds more bulk than just using a larger servo and putting it. On the side? On the side with the gear facing down. And then we don't need a larger gear and the... The gear facing down? I'm confused. So it'd be like this. So it's a rack and pinion? Yeah. And it would just go on either like the inside or the outside. Well, oh, to the yeah, stand. well, it would have to interact with the outside of the rings. It would still, but either either the pins on this would be on this side or they would be on this side if it was here. This gun's gonna look kind of weird. It's gonna have a lump on the right side and a lump on the left side. It's gonna look like something from Mad Max Fury Road. Well, in that Splendid. case, well, in that case, then that why don't we again. put it here? I mean, you already have that there. Well, then we have even more off-center weight on one side. <laughs> then then we'll, we'll have the I stand, know. but then it won't work. I have the solution. We can just like add some lead in here. That'll totally work. Hey, the original Nest. What a great idea. The original Nest Zapper had weights in it. I mean, you do already have this big old lump on one side. Mm hmm. This doesn't weigh that much more. It, well, definitely weighs less than that. It says. Yeah, but the thing is, if, if you have that, then the gear is going to stick out even further. See, like if you have this on, like if you think of it from a top down view, which is what you're proposing. The, the gear doesn't have to be that big. That's true, but it's what still. What I'm saying is, we use a bigger servo so we can use a continuous motion servo. So you can just use the gear that like comes on it. But that's huge. I but mean, we it's don't not need that any big. Of a servo. But it's not any bigger than the motor. Like it right, doesn't actually add anything. Right, but now you have two heavy things on the right side of the gun. This isn't heavy. This this doesn't. It's I feel like this doesn't then. add significant weight though. I mean, it's going to be anything, bulky no matter where we put it, anything, though. If anything, why don't you put it on the other side to help balance the weight? That would because make... you, you already have the bulk on one side, so I'm trying to keep the, the width of the entire unit down. Because if I put it on the other side, then it has to be even wider. Whereas here, it's factoring in with the weight that, or the width that you've already added with this motor. But then you're going to have at least one third of a gear attached to that as well, which is going to take up more space in that direction. Not more than we already, than we already have. I mean, look at that. I mean, even if you make it this big, so that still stays within, like, is, well within well, that's the true. width of that motor. Well, I mean, this is that's the diameter right there, so. Well, but the proposed diameter again. But if we're using a continuous motion servo, you I'd don't need that. I prefer not to use a continuous motion servo if Why? we don't. Because it seems like right now the only. I mean, I found a handful. We only need one. I think it's a really clunky way to do it. I mean, it's not ideal anyway because we have that thing that's off center. It's gonna be a really ugly case, man. You're you're making like a Homer Simpson car of glue guns here. Kind of, yeah. Well, 
But it's gonna be cool. That's what Homer said. Yeah, it's true. What if the motor was like just straight up and down? That's what I was thinking we should do from the beginning. I mean, isn't there a way to just rotate this whole thing 90 degrees? Because you have it just pinching between two things. Can't that just be on the sides instead of the top and bottom? So we're thinking about using this thing because it's uh, larger, it's skinnier, has a pointed nose, and uh, it has a thermocouple built into it. Although we could probably just uh, JB weld on a thermistor since that's what our system uses. Uh, so I started drawing this in Fusion 360. So here's the um, barrel with the two ceramic insulating uh, ends on it. So the heat won't transfer into the case and melt the plastic. Then we have an offset at the bottom of it, which is where the uh, heater element actually is. And of course the wires come out the back of that. On the back of it, we have the silicon loading area. I drew that in red so it matches. I've also drawn in a big long glue stick that kind of represents, you know, however long it would be, as long as it's past the end of the gun, I don't care. So what I'm doing now is just trying to figure out where to put these bearings again. Karen went and got a slightly smaller bearing. This one is uh, Imperial. It's uh, 0.625, 5 eighths. So we got these roller pins here that we can slide into the bearing and it's also a screw. So should be able to screw that into the plastic. All right, so special sauce that I want to do here is to make this as parametric as possible. So I'm gonna turn off all these extra layers and I have one sketch active and I'm gonna call this the um, um, extruder top. Okay, so there's a thing in Fusion 360 which is the uh, parameters that you can change. So I've set up a few of these things as, you know, kind of like variables, or they're really more like constants because they're not gonna change. We have the stick diameter. I measured quite a few, including these really old ones that look like urine. Uh, it varies from like 0.44 to uh, 0.45. So I'm gonna go 445. Uh, and you know, we can always change that later on. So then we have a constant for the bearing diameter and the gear diameter. Okay, so here's where I wanna try to use the magic sauce. Let's do uh, bearing offset. And that will be how far the center of the bearing is from the center of the glue stick. And I think we can probably uh, make this parametric. So I'm gonna kind of type a formula. I'm gonna go stick diameter divided by two. So half of it. And then we're gonna to add to that the bearing diameter divided by two. Hopefully this works. Gives us a value of 0.535. Okay, we're gonna enter that. So that's bearing offset. So let's go in here. Let's uh, click on this sketch so our dimensions show up. And we have, we already have one, but I just typed in an arbitrary number. So I'm gonna type in bearing offset and that should raise it up. Yep, cool. And let's do the same thing for this. That's our uh, brass 3D printer gear. Well, let's go in here, change parameters. So we have the gear diameter of 0.4291. It's probably some metric thing, but whatever. Now let's create gear offset. Gear offset. This is again gonna be stick diameter divided by two. And I'm putting in parentheses around it so it separates the expressions, just like you would in programming. And then we're gonna take gear diameter divided by two. Cool, 4371, and this is gear offset. Now something that just does not take into account is the compression we have to add on the stick. I mean, this would put the things right at the edge of the stick with no compression. Obviously we wanna squeeze the stick, but what this will allow is uh, we can change everything automatically. That should, there we go. The edge of these two circles should be equidistant from the center here. If we were to change the stick diameter to something like uh, 0.1, they'll come in quite close to each other. Cool. Uh, yeah, so the reason I did this is because I wanted to do it the right way. And uh, yeah, I, as I mentioned, you know, stick diameter, it's not just the diameter of the stick. We need to compress it in a little bit so both the idler wheel and the gear have a good grip on it. And then we need to experiment with that versus the strength of the motor. So by having a single parameter that we can change, that will make it easier. I mean, we could even change the diameter of the bearing if we wanted, because see the bearing diameter is also a parameter. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of guess a pressure of 0.41. Again, we can always change it. So I'm gonna go back into here. 0.41, boom, all right, cool. So if we go into our perspective view here, I haven't obviously drawn these items yet, I've just drawn the sketch of them. But if we turn on the glue stick, we should see that it is partially intersected. Yep, see that? And that will, you know, imply the pressure being put on the glue stick to hopefully push it through the barrel. All right, so I JB welded the thermistor, the same type of thermistor to this barrel I have the AC running into it. So uh, even though it's a different barrel, it should run the same way, unless it doesn't. The Hyperloop is the future of loops. All right, I'm gonna plug it in. 
Here we go. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know what's, if it's to full temperature yet because it really shouldn't be that hard to extrude glue. With, I mean, I can get it to extrude with my thumb, but it's not coming out very fast. And then also when I pull the trigger to move the gear, see, it's, it's moving the glue stick, but it's, something's slowing it down in the barrel. I guess I could probably just run this thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait, was that it just now? Oh, 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 there we go. So we started out trying to come up with a mechanism to operate our auto stand. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we realized that we needed to redesign almost the entire top portion of the gun, right. rotating the motor 90 degrees and well, adjusting good. the position of the heating elements, as well as possibly swapping it out for a bigger one. Yeah, uh, we tried using the existing motor with this larger heating element. I like this because it's nice and long, which gives us more room to put things like an auto stand. Mm -hmm. However, I think this is probably a bit more than we need, and also it's kind of pushing the limits of what the motor can do. It can push this glue stick, but it's awfully big. So I kind of like to find something in between these two sizes. Okay, and probably preferably that uses the mini glue sticks. I think that would give us the best bet. Okay, so maybe we should go online and shop for some more hot glue guns that use mini sticks but have a right. longer nozzle. Well, we figured out all the individual parts of this well-built super glue gun. Now we just have to figure out the best way to put everything together in a really cool enclosure to make a nice prototype glue gun. So we can say, hey, there it is. What do you think of this? Should we continue this and try to make a product out of it? So hopefully we're pretty close to being able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas for mechanisms for our auto stand that we haven't thought of yet? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. Stick around, we'll see you next time. Mars, because Mars, my name is Elon Musk, and I want to die on Mars. I made a new invention. It looks like a regular trash can, but it has solar panels on it. <laughs> it is called the solar can, and it is energy reinvented. I used to think to myself, why do people have their trash cans inside when they could be outside making energy for them? Introducing the solar trash can. You can put it on a roadway and it will power a hyperloop. And time goes by. Holders aren't quite comfortable with this. We're not sure how, quote, getting revenge on Spider-Man is going to increase our Q3 forecast. Would you like to smell like a billionaire? Get Elon's Musk. Musk. It's a, the only perfume made of solar panels and Tesla cars. <laughs> it's the only perfume that generates energy. Last episode, we were working on the auto stand mechanism and it led to us redesigning the entire upper portion of the hot glue gun. So what we're gonna do today is basically continue working on the design. We bought some more glue guns so we can try to find out which heater barrel is the right length and then try to get this thing designed. Why are you constantly eating plastic? I'm just analyzing what's in it. This isn't standard ABS.